Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a very interesting show for you. Oh, boy. We've got a disaster in Florida. This is not a good situation. And uh, it, I mean this warning, Florida fans. You don't want to watch this. Look, now you folks know Florida is my nemesis. They are Newman to my Seinfeld. It's just the way that it is. They are Will Wheaton to my Sheldon. They're just ever since the 90s with uh, Spurrier and his you can't spell uh, citrus without a U and a T and all the digging that he did to us. Um, I, I never uh, miss a chance to uh, have some sport at Florida's expense, but this is, this is rough. So if you are a Florida fan, you do need to walk away. Just walk, walk away. away. That's right. Listen to Humongous. You need to walk. I'm not kidding. I'm going to give you a moment. Just turn it off. I don't need the views. It's not worth it. It's going to upset you. And all I'm going to do is uh, tell you the news. But the way I'm going to tell it, it's probably not going to be the way you would like it. So just go on. Vols fans, just give them a minute. It's okay. Now, men, I have just one thing to say. This isn't going to be kid stuff. Oh, Barney. Sheriff, if you don't mind. All right, they all gone? Okay, they're gone now. Now we can talk. Now, folks, you know all about the Jaden Rashada situation, the whole contract mix-up, the $13 million he was supposed to get, and he wound up getting zero. And, uh, you know, I even showed you the contract. And this is it right here. And it was official. It had the Florida logo on it, the whole $13 million and everything. So that kind of settled how much it was. But I thought they had the contract situation fixed. But it turns out it may not be the case. They had switched to an 8.5 by 11, and it, you just put the money right there, and then you signed it right there, and then somebody for the collective who has no responsibility would sign it right there, and there you go. Everybody's happy, right? Well, it turns out that may not be the case, and I'm thinking this could be a collective situation because if you're uh, this quarterback, Austin Simmons, that I'm going to show you, he was committed to Florida, and they were talking about him reclassifying He's a sophomore, but he's 17 years old. He's a good quarterback. He's a high four-star. And they were going to reclassify him to 2023 so they'd have a quarterback, you know, that they could start working with for the future. Well, he has flipped. Not only did he reclassify like they thought, but he flipped to Ole Miss. It says uh, four-star quarterback, 2025 class, says he'll reclassify, head two cycles, joining the incoming freshman in 2023, he initially committed to Florida in April. Simmons announced he flipped to Old Miss along with plans to reclassify. He's a number 58 prospect. He said, and I quote, I will be flipping my commitment to University of Mississippi. Also, after long conversations with my family and mentors, I've decided to reclassify. I can't wait to see what my future holds. To Coach Kiffin and the rest of the Old Miss staff, thank you for giving me this opportunity to bring a national championship to Oxford. I almost can't believe this. It's almost like Florida is snake bit. First, they lose out on Jaden Rashada. They had another quarterback who couldn't come because he sang the uh, he sang a rap song in, on social media, and just that didn't go well. And they had another guy that got in all kinds of trouble. So that's like the fourth quarterback they've lost due to all kinds of decommitting and everything you can think of. They've lost him, whether it was money or who knows what. So this is a really bad situation for Florida. Now, you know me, I like to see what the Florida YouTubers are saying about this because, look, they've got to be in shock. And this is High Top Sports. You know I like to feature High Top. Uh, he's actually a really good YouTuber. <laughs> he's pretty uh, entertaining. And let's see what he has to say about this. He's usually pretty honest about it. Now, he's going to try to spin it, I'm sure, but it, this is not good. What an incredible effing day here, boys and girls, on the show. I, I came out here, <laughs> I'm pissed, bro. Billy has got me in an array of emotions. W what are we doing here, right? What, what, what is happening? Amir Jackson, four-star tight end, just committed to the Florida Gators after the monster news just dropped with Austin Simmons. I'm gonna have to hold, have to have a whole separate show for that, guys. I'm gonna have to get suited up. I'll come back on in about 30 minutes. So it's gonna be a busy day. All right. Let's just deal with the old Miss situation here for for just a few moments here. Okay, guys. I'm pissed. This had to happen <laughs> right when I wanted to come here and have a have a moment with everybody. Um, look, guys. Lots gonna happen over the next few hours, few days or so, where we're gonna get roasted for losing out on Simmons. And that's not true. I'm not going to even mention it. <laughs> Fashion that we did as well, too. What I have to say to that is you got to learn how to take it on the chin. Simple as that. You're going to get roasted. 
the on three situation with Newberg and those guys. Newberg sits down when he pees. Okay, so I wouldn't get too upset about anything that he co- comes around and starts spitting ball and, and doing his thing. All right. As to who's to blame for this section here, look, I I, I thought about it as it happened. I was kind of just frustrated and just irate. Obviously, Billy's going to take some 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 blame, and and he has to. That's that's as the leader, as the front runner. He was naturally is going to take blame. This is falls on him. I'm sure there's other things behind the scenes that we may not know what's going on or can't see. Hundred percent. But a lot of people, a ton of people, have said that Billy Napier is in over his head. And when I asked the question, well, how so? Right. The thing that keeps getting brought up is managing the outside relationship, managing relationship with the the boosters or whatever it may be. It's a whole other animal. It's not the X's and O's that 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 that's the issue. Right, it's the management uh, with outside that we can't see. Okay, so this to me is a knock on him managing those relationships one way or another. We continue to get burned. We continue to get trolled. Now, a lot of people are going to say Josh Newberg is the issue. Okay, and and the on three situation is an issue, and I, I I'm not defending those guys there at on three. However, there they have a job. And they're doing their job. It's like TMZ. It's a, it's dirty. I don't like it. I think what they did just two days ago and released the news without really having any confirmation, it seems like. It seems like it came from him and then Keith Niebuhr from On3 as well, too. Those are the two. On3 had reported that uh, he was reclassifying. That made everybody think he was going to sign with the Gators. He was already committed to the Gators, so everybody just assumed that's going to fall in place. So On3 had reported uh, something along those lines. And then the family came out and said, no, he did not reclassify. Well, now he is reclassifying and going to Ole Miss. That originally reported it, uh, that he was reclassifying to Florida. I sat back because nothing else came out, so it was very strange. I was like, this seems kind of weird that Billy hasn't talked about it and neither has Austin Simmons, so something was up. We want to get pissed at on three, and and I think, look, it's on Josh Newberg and on three to kind of maybe say, hey, maybe maybe we should wait because this doesn't seem right. I don't think this news is correct. Let me wait on for a second. The other thing is, is that look, this seems like it's happened before. So my question is, is what what's where's the disconnect? Is there someone in the camp that keeps letting out this information? If I'm Billy, I'm like, dude, we can't, we have to stop. We cannot continue to let this go out. Or if it's on three reporters or guys that are associated that are beat Florida beat writers that are coming in and they're talking to the kids. You, we're, they're going to shut down access to media. If I'm Billy Napier, no more, you're not allowed in here anymore. Now, if, obviously, they can call him individually. They can say what they need to say. But if they're on camp with these guys, they're talking to coaches, trying to get a tab on everything so they can get ready for it. At what point do you go, no, you're no longer allowed on campus anymore? A lot of things there to, to kind of unpack. I think there's, it's, it's, there's a, you know, who do you want to blame, whatever. T- look, take the L. We took an L there, boys. We lost Lane Kiffin. It sucks. I'm not going to sit here and say it's it's NIL, it's this. It's all of it. Honestly, it's all of it. And we have to figure it out. Billy needs to figure it out. Now, there's some of you that didn't even want the kid to reclassify anyways, so you really shouldn't be too upset because it's 2025, plenty of time to replace him. Um, look, it just feels like we're, we're kind of behind the eight ball for 2023 with that quarterback situation, so this was going to replace that. Um, but look, I think there's going to be some Gator fans that aren't really too worried about it because they weren't excited about getting getting a 17-year-old anyways. Also, the ones that are trolling us, those are the same guys trolling us when we were getting a 17-year-old commit. So, to be fair, nobody has any room to say anything. We're being honest. I don't appreciate him calling me a troll. What is the capital of a city? I don't know that. (laughs) Okay, maybe I'm trolling a little bit. (laughs) Anyway, let's see what uh, uh, another YouTuber in Florida has to say. This is one that usually spreads a lot of sunshine and happiness about the Gators. We'll see if that's the case on this one. We do know that he took a visit to Old Miss, and then he came back to Gainesville and visited UF shortly after that. And confidence from the UF staff remained high that not only was he going to reclassify, but that he was going to stay committed to the University of Florida. On Thursday, various reports, both national and local reporters, confirmed what we had already told you a few weeks ago that Simmons was going to be reclassifying to the class of 2023. And those reports were met with mixed emotions and thoughts. And then today, as you know, Austin Simmons did reclassify to the class of 2023, but he flipped his commitment to Old Miss, the place that he visited a few weeks ago. From what I've been told, NIL did play a role in this decision. Here's what I'm going to say about the situation. 
I stand by the information that I was given. I was told that he would reclassify. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Simmons was working through the enrollment process at UF. We knew he was going to reclassify. What we had no clue on and what shocked everybody else was the flip to oldness in the 11th hour. Now, some folks have deleted tweets, deleted videos, and totally changed their narrative on Simmons. I will not do any of that. I was given information, I trusted that information, and that information turned out to be spot on. The flip to Old Miss is the wrench that was thrown into it. When I to was told that Simmons was reclassifying, the fact that he was committed to UF, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was working through the enrollment process at UF, I have no reason to be ashamed or embarrassed by anything that was reported. I stand by my sources, and I also think it's really important to say my sources in this situation and in any situation that I have ever or will ever report on are my own. I will never ever use another reporter's story as my source. Austin Simmons was always going to reclassify, but he picked a different school. It's as simple as that. And I believe this is a situation where a kid changed his mind for whatever reason and flipped schools. I will 100% continue to dig on this, and I hope that I can provide a full update as to why things changed at some point. But I do want you to know that I believe NIL was heavily involved, and what I've been told by people familiar with the situation, that is the case. I don't think that this is a situation where UF couldn't meet the demands if they wanted to. I think it's more of a situation of not seeing the value in meeting the demand. I don't think that this means that UF's NIL is in bad shape. I actually think it means that we're smart with our NIL money. Just because we have the money, and y'all, we do, we do have the money, it doesn't mean that we need to throw it into the wind. So do with that what you will. I am more than happy to chat about this. I'm happy to answer questions on it or just hang out in the comments. Overall, I don't think Simmons was gonna play this year regardless. So I think the craziest part of this entire Austin Simmons saga uh, is the quote that David Simmons, who's Austin's dad, gave to the Palm Beach Post just a few moments ago. He said, Florida's, Florida was nice, don't get it twisted, but the schedule's too hard and they want DJ Lagway. That is such a bizarre thing to run to a newspaper and say, okay, and I have heard throughout this entire commitment that Austin Simmons' dad is one of those dads. And, you know, I, I think sometimes we talk about the parents and recruiting and what they want. And there are some parents who want to be in the driver's seat of the of recruitment processes. There are other kids whose parents solely let them dictate where it is that they want to go and what their priorities are. In the Simmons family, it appears, at least from the outside in, that's dad driving this machine here. But your kid flips his commitment and your first thought is to go to your local newspaper and essentially say that you're scared. You're scared not only of the schedule, but you're scared of competition within the locker room. I feel like that's a really weird thing to put on your kid, especially with all the craziness that's going on. So, uh, you know, honestly, with that quote, maybe you have dodged a bullet. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't want a quarterback who's scared of the schedule or scared of competition. That's not the kind of guy that's going to win championships at the University of Florida. I'll tell you that much. I had a feeling she'd turn that into a positive some way. Uh, that was pretty spicy right there. <laughs> I think she's saying he's scared. But uh, anyway, uh, that is that schedule in 2024, which is probably where he'd be a starter or dealing with DJ Lagway. That's a heck of a schedule. Like I said, I put out a video yesterday or the day before about it, and it's terrible. They've got to not only deal with a very difficult eight-game SEC schedule, but they got to play Miami, Florida State, and UCF, and they're playing Sanford, which is the one easy win they've got. Everything else is going to be a dogfight. And that'll... You know, I've been pretty clear. I don't think Napier is going to survive these next two years. I don't know if uh, he'll, he might survive uh, next year, you know, if he can win eight games. I think if he wins six or seven, it's going to be real tough. Seven, maybe six is going to be rough. And then let's say he does survive that year. Then he goes into that really tough schedule and he's going to be starting, what, a true freshman in DJ Lagway? 
or Graham Mertz, who would be in his second year, I, I don't know. This is not looking good. Like I said, hopefully if you're a Florida fan, you did not watch all the way to the end of this because you're going to be upset. And, you know, if you're a Tennessee fan, you're probably, you know, roasting marshmallows. And I understand that. Um, I've been known to do that myself. Like I say, I, I've been known to troll a little bit. And uh, this is one that, what am I supposed to do? Ignore this? <laughs> you knew I was going to do a video. So if you like this uh, content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols and all that good stuff. And we're supposed to play at 7 o'clock tonight, but there's a rain delay on an earlier game, so I don't know what's going to happen. So anyway, we'll be uh, watching that. Right over here is my most recent video. Be sure to check that one out. YouTube thinks you'll love it. And we will see you next time on Sports Talk J, the troll.